So the next topic in SC401 is create and manage exact data match classifiers. Now, I've done a video on this one previously, not that long ago, and having reviewed it, the content is still absolutely fine for the purposes of this exam guide. There is little to no changes for that content. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to link to that video right here, right now in the top right-hand corner, you should see that pop up for you to go and take a look at. But it's also worth sticking around on this video too, because what I intend to do here is just have a little recap. I won't go through the setup again and testing it. You can see all that in the linked video here. But I do want to compare what it looks like now as compared to then, because the portal has changed. So we'll have a look at that and we can uh, share some of the latest information about exact data match with these learn guys that we have ready. I'll put those in the comments section or the description section rather of this video for you. And then we will finish off this particular video by doing a bit of a comparison. Why should we use a document fingerprinting versus custom sensitive information types versus exact data match? So between this video, this sort of reinforcement and update, and refresher and the old video which is still good we should get you exam ready so let's start with a look at the purview portal which exactly the same as the previous video when we did document fingerprinting i'm still in sensitive info types at the moment and i've filtered by exact data match now if you've already been back to the previous video and watched through that you'll see that these same classifiers that I set up on that occasion, the healthcare classifier was the one that we particularly focused on. They're all still there, they've not changed. So we're all good to go on that. So what we need to understand is how things have differed. And, and in truth, they really haven't at all. It's very, very cosmetic, the changes in terms of EDM classifiers in this newer style portal. So if we go into EDM classifiers, uh, and again, this is under solutions, information protection, classifiers, and then EDM classifiers. Now we've got there, we can just collapse this and get more space. We can see these here as well. Now, I don't know why it says that the source file is not yet uploaded. It could well be that it's been because I haven't looked at this for some time and it's just expired. So that's interesting, but not quite the point. But as you'll see, uh, if you've checked out the previous video, this is pretty much as it was. It looks the same. We've got those classifiers there. And what we can do is we can create our own EDM classifier right from here as we did in the first video. And if we do so, the experience is the same. We name it, we define the schema, we specify the detection rules, and then we review and finish. So let's just put in a little bit of fake data there and go through. And it's the same options we had in the previous uh, video, upload a file containing sample data, which is what we did, or you could manually define your data structure with this option, which will take you here and you can create your columns and build it out there and then uh, select your primary elements and column settings, detection rules, review and finish. So for this video, I'm not gonna go through that again. Let's just take a little look through the info here, learn the end-to-end -end workflow. And this is a great thing to take a look at to familiarize yourself with the steps needed to put your classifier to work. So number one is a prerequisite, discover and prepare your sensitive data. And this is really good because it shows you where you need to do this. This needs to take place outside of the compliance portal. And it tells you what you're gonna require, which is a file containing the actual sensitive data you want your classifier to detect. And we had that in the previous video. And highly recommended as part of that as a similar file with sample data that will be used when creating the EDM classifier in the next step. So that next step, number two, create an EDM classifier. That's within the compliance portal. And that's what we just clicked on a few moments ago. And we click to create that EDM classifier to open the wizard that walks you through that step. This is the process at a glance. You choose that method that we just saw previously we map that data to existing sensitive info types, and then we set up rules to control exactly what will info will be detected in your organization's content. Next, what we do is we securely upload the file 
containing your org's sensitive info. Again, this is outside of the compliance portal. And after creating the classifier, we've got to use a tool called the EDM Upload Agent, which again, we used in the last video. So go check that out and see how that works. And that is used to hash and upload the file containing your org's data. And for greater security, we recommend using different computers to hash and upload separately. Uh, and there's a link here to learn how to do that. So lots of great guidance there in terms of how to do it. And then finally, test the classifier in simulation mode and publish it. That again, in this instance, is within the compliance portal. And after the classifier is connected to your org's data file, a couple of ways to test it out before including it in policies. Select the classifier from sensitive info types pages, choose test, and upload a sample doc and similar process to what we did in the previous video in this series, which was the document fingerprinting. And then finally, create a sensitivity auto labeling policy that detects content matching the classifier and run that in simulation mode. So nice and simple. And again, there's lots of guidance here in terms of all of these steps. We've got these wonderful uh, learn guides here in terms of how you do all this. So I'll put all these in the description as ever. Well worth checking out for your exam study reference and your own testing. But let's take a look now, as we did last time, in terms of when you would use exact data match versus custom sensitive information types versus document fingerprinting. And I've asked Copilot once again, and Copilot as ever has told me this is a great question. And Purview offers several methods to classify and protect sensitive information. And here's a breakdown of when to use which. So just a little reminder, custom sensitive information types, we need to use these when we want to detect patterns of sensitive data that are not covered by the built-in sits. And the data follows a specific format or pattern, such as a custom ID, account number, or internal reference code. You also would want to use this when you want to use regular expressions, keywords, and confidence levels to define what constitutes sensitive data. And it gives you some example use cases here, such as employee ID numbers with specific format. Document fingerprinting, which was the subject of the last video, we want to use that when we want to protect standardized forms or templates that contain sensitive information, and when the document structure is consistent, even if the actual data varies, and when you need to detect documents that are similar in layout and content to a known sensitive document. Example use cases here, tax forms, medical intake forms, or legal contracts or NDAs. Now we've got exact data match and we want to use EDM when we need to protect specific values from a structured data source, like a database or a CSV file. And when the data is highly sensitive and precise, such as customer names, SSNs or account numbers. And when you want high accuracy and low false positives in detection. So example use cases in the case of EDMs are customer PII from a CRM system, patient records from a healthcare database, and credit card numbers from a financial system. And here we can see a summary comparison of custom sits, document fingerprinting, and exact data match. And we can see the, what the feature is best for, the detection method, the false positives, setup complexity and the use case examples. So just briefly looking at some of this data, custom sits, best for pattern-based data, document fingerprinting, best for structured documents, exact data match for specific values from data assets. The detection method, custom sits is regex and keywords, document fingerprinting is document structure similarity, and exact data match is hashing and lookup. False positive settings for custom SIDs and document fingerprinting are medium and it's low for EDM. The setup complexity is moderate for both custom SIDs and document fingerprinting and quite rightly identified here for exact data match as high. You need a little bit more expertise in order to set up the EDM. And we've got some use case examples to finish off. So for custom SIDs, that would be custom IDs and codes. For document fingerprinting, tax forms and contracts, and for exact data match, it would be SSNs and account numbers. So there you go, that's it. Nice and simple, uh, but a little bit more effort involved uh, in creating exact data matches, uh, in uh, exact data match classifiers, that is, in, in the Purview portal. Do, if you haven't already, do please go and check out that previous video, which is linked. It will show you the end-to-end -end process, which I went through last time. It's such a, I know I'm being a bit lazy by not doing it again, but the content is still good. So please go and check that video out and it will show you exactly how I did it 
but this video really is more of that refresher to show how it looks in the newer purview portal, where to find it, and a little bit more of a deeper comparison in terms of when to use it versus the other means of classification, um, which I think will be very, very useful for you in the context of the exam, because that's the sort of question that you're likely to get asked. What would you use to uh, achieve this particular situation for classifying information? So do make sure you know the differences between things like the custom sensitive info types, like the document fingerprinting, and exact data matches. And in the next video, we'll do a similar exercise. We will look again at creating and managing trainable classifiers. We'll look at the previous video for that and link to it and update anything that may have changed since that last time. Okay, I'm going to wind this video up now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this SC401 exam guide series. I hope it's being useful for you. If it is, please do give me a thumbs up. It takes a second, it's free to do so, and it helps me to reach a wider audience, as does you hitting the subscribe button as well. Completely free, takes a second, helps me so much you wouldn't believe. I will see you in the next video, which will be, as I said, creating and managing trainable classifiers. In the meantime, please do all stay safe. Travel well, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.